Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady and today I wanted to do a cool season cottage gardening seedling identification video. Now there's a lot of intricacies from when you are doing direct seeding to cover up open space in your gardens and knowing what those seedlings look like at various stages of germination and then also being able to distinguish them from the problematic cool season weeds is a really, really important skill. And so I think this video hopefully will not only be useful for you, but you'll be able to refer back to it as you see things growing and germinating in your gardens through the months of December, January, February, March, a lot of these cool season weeds will start growing now and they'll ultimately flower and set seed in, in the middle of spring. And that was the best time to avoid that cycle from happening. So if you can get rid of the problem plants now, you'll have less weed pressure in the future. So let me turn this camera around and show you what is growing both good and bad here in my now zone seven central North Carolina garden in the beginning of December. First, it's super important to note I just watered and we're gonna see how well I did because I didn't really get down on my hands and knees and scrape the soil away to see what was absorbed, but it's actually looking pretty good. Uh, we're very dry and this is a really critical time in the seedlings life cycle to not dry out because basically as big as these seedlings are, the, they're equal size in their roots, which means they're only like maybe a half an inch and that half inch can dry out really easily. So it's important to keep your beds moist. All right, so what are we looking at? We've got a lot here, it's very exciting. So this is mustard right here. And this is crimson clover. You see it's got the three leaf. And I have some things that I can't definitively say. I think this is probably larkspur, but until the true leaves come out, I'm not 100% on that. All right, what else do we have growing here? We have. I know I did the spicy greens mix through this front section. So I also see a lot of poppies, a lot of poppies. So that's what those tiny little things are there. And I believe those are probably Pepaver somniferum, but until they get a little larger, I don't wanna say that too definitively because honestly, I think I sowed many different kinds of poppies in this bed. This is a lupin, and that's really easy to distinguish between all the other stuff that's growing here. Now let me go to another section so I can show you some other things. All right, lots of poppies. So first I wanna go over different types of poppies. This right here with the really dissected foliage. That is California poppy, is Schultzia californica. And that in distinction with these other poppies, which these are actually looking to me like they're probably Pephaver Reese, um, or the Shirley poppy, the World War II commemorative poppy. Again, once they get a little bit bigger, I, I will feel more confident about that identification. Uh, we've got more crimson clover germinating there, more mustard. Here's a bachelor button that's growing there. And more lupins. I've been really making sure to keep those watered well. And of course, that edge of garlic to help deter the voles from coming in and eating all the roots of these plants. All right, I know your next question. Do you thin? And the answer is no, do not thin. Let the plants fight it out. Honestly, they will figure out who the strongest to grower to grow is. And uh, it, there's no point in trying to micromanage a, a cottage garden bed that defeats the purpose of cottage gardening. So don't thin, don't waste your time. And if you're gonna thin anything, I suppose, thin the edibles, thin the, the mustard or the kales, 
things that are growing that are edible, um, then you can bring them inside and enjoy. But I'm not gonna do anything thinning here at all. I did want to show you definitively Larkspur. This is Larkspur growing. So you see the cotyledon leaves are very similar to like every other cotyledon leaf, but once they develop true leaves, you can really tell what the Larkspur is. And it's got this dissected leaf kind of in three main sections, but it's kind of rounded overall. And that's an important distinguishing factor between Larkspur and Nigella. Nigella's true leaves look completely different. Let me show you. All right, here we have Nigella. And you can see how the leaflets ultimately are like up along the petiole. So they have a similar looking individual leaf to the Larkspur, but the way the leaf ultimately elongates is very different. So you compare Nigella right here to Larkspur right here. So you can really see a difference in the shape, though the texture is very similar. All right, looking at this ground cover here in the feed tank bed. Well, we've got a lot of California poppies, and then we also have different varieties of lettuce mixed in. I also have Swiss chard in this mix, in addition to kale, which you can see is kind of pointy foliage and has a bit of a pubescence, so that distinguishes it. And there's a handful of other greens in here. Again, they're a little small, I bet maybe by next week, it'll be a bit easier to distinguish one variety from another. But overall, I'm really pleased with how this bed is coming along. And I think the burgundy lettuce is really gonna be a dynamic addition to add a lot of color. All right, what about undesirable plants? Well, let's start with chickweed, which I have a lot of. And there you go, pulling the root out is best. Getting it when it's small, it's much easier. And well, if you can deal with it early and it won't seed, you'll really help reduce the amount of chickweed that you have next year. Additionally, for me, really, I think probably one of my worst weeds is this native geranium and you know it's got a tap root it's easy to pull out especially at this at this age it's young and small not really all that well rooted and it will seed everywhere it just will completely cover the ground if you let it you can see i have a lot of it a lot of it i really need to spend some quality time on my hands and knees in this bed weeding out all the undesirable plants. Of course, there's more than just geraniums and chickweed. So let me show you some other areas. All right, so let me show you some other problem plants. I have a lot of them. This is a really weedy lamium. Let me pull that out so you can see the roots. So again, easiest to get this now. And the Velcro weed, oh truly is my arch nemesis. It already has a much more significant root system. You can see what the leaves look like. Let me get that, that off. Small, kind of sticky. The cats are the ones that primarily move the seed around because it sticks to their coat. Another huge problem plant for me is common vetch. And you can see it has a pretty substantial root system. It is a nitrogen fixing legume, but it's, it's really aggressive. So that's what that looks like. Again, it's easier to pull out now than it is to wait. All of these winter weeds will just keep getting bigger and they don't ever seem to be impacted by cold temperatures. Here along this south facing fence line, first of all, it's dry. I haven't watered, you can see soil is just like powder so i need water but i wanted to show you this combo 
which I think was spicy mixed green. So this is a brassica with these heart-shaped leaves. And then these are poppies, these really tiny, you know, just tiny little plants. Those are all poppies. So you can really distinguish the difference in texture. And again, I'm not exactly certain what brassica all of this is, but I think by next week I'll be able to tell. But what I really need to do is go ahead and bring the hose out because this bed is very, very dry. And these seedlings will absolutely suffer if they don't get some water. Well, everybody, I'm gonna take my own advice and get everything watered. Of course, as you can see, my uh, handle, even though I had it disconnected and turned upside down, it still burst during last week's cold. So I need to buy some new, new roses for my hoses. Uh, but I'm gonna make sure I get all the rest of these seedlings well watered. And um, that'll certainly make doing a weeding significantly easier because those undesirable plants will be able to be pulled out more easily. Well, I do hope this video will be a useful reference for all of you who are following along and growing cottage garden mixes so that you can better identify the good and the bad that is germinating right now in early December. Well, I hope you'll stay tuned for more updates. And as always, thanks so much for watching everybody.